Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Tint TV Hello dear students, how are you doing today? I hope you are having a good quality time with your family and loved ones during these times. And may you keep motivated as the last two quarters continue. And of course, let us still be cautious and always observe health protocols wherever we are, especially now that our progressive expansion limited face-to-face -face classes is going on. At this point, allow me to congratulate you for you have come this far. I am Teacher Christelle, and now I encourage everyone to watch and listen attentively while enjoying the opportunity of learning the correct use of pronouns. I know most of you are familiar with the eight parts of speech in English since they were taught in the primary level. But there are still those who find it difficult to use pronouns correctly. Before we proceed, let me see if you can still remember the eight parts of speech in the following jumbled letters. I will be giving the definition and you have to guess by arranging these letters to form a part of speech. Please type your answer on the comment section below. Let us start. Number one, it is an action word that tells what happened in a sentence. The answer is verb. How about the next one? It shows how spatial, temporal, and role relations between a noun or pronoun and the other words in a sentence. 
Preposition is the correct answer. Next, it describes noun and pronouns. Of course, it is an adjective. You got it right. How about this one? It describes nouns and pronouns. Of course, it is an adjective. You got it right. How about this? It joins words, phrases, and clauses in a sentence. None other than conjunction. Let us have the next one. It describes verbs, adjectives, and even other adverbs. It was mentioned already, adverb is the answer. Next, it is a name of a person, place, thing, or idea. Noun, of course, is a name of a person, place, thing, or idea. How about this one? It is an expression that can stand on its own or be contained within sentences. Interjection, yes, correct answer. And lastly, our lesson for today is all about this part of speech. It stands in place of a noun in a sentence. Correct, pronoun is the answer. You really remembered the different parts of speech. That was a fun review. Anyway, how do you react when you see someone writes, they're finally here? Or when it is written somewhere on the billboard, he's good looking? And when one of your Facebook friends commented, you're beautiful. Were you aware of the errors in the given sentences? Or have you found yourself confused as well so you end up looking for the correct pronoun to be used? There are several types of pronouns, but what we are going to focus in today's discussions are the commonly used ones, the personal pronouns. To make sure that you use the pronoun correctly, you must know the cases of personal pronouns. For today, we aim to define what pronoun is, specifically a personal pronoun. Distinguish its three cases, and most importantly, use personal pronouns effectively. Have you ever addressed someone with the wrong pronoun? Instead of he, you called him she. Was he offended? Pronouns are essential in the way we communicate with one another. The importance of pronoun in communication, however, is crucial. We use pronouns to identify or refer to someone. By using the pronouns for the concerned persons appropriately, we also simply show them respect and form an inclusive environment. These are just some of the reasons why you should know the correct pronoun to be used in addressing someone along with avoiding misunderstanding and miscommunication. Let us find out how well you know pronouns through this activity. Choose the correct pronoun to be used in each statement. Please type your answer on the comment section below. Item number one, Paul, Drew, and myself, me, or I tested positive of COVID-19? The correct answer is Paul, Drew, and I tested positive of COVID-19. Did you get it right? Good job! Let us have some more. Auntie encouraged both Colleen and we, me, or there to be vaccinated against the virus. What is your answer, Fernandino Teens? Yes, me is the appropriate pronouns to be used. 
Auntie encouraged both Colleen and me to be vaccinated against the virus. Let us have the last one. Your phone takes better photos than I, mine, or we. What is your answer? All right, the correct answer is mine. Your phone takes better photos than mine. What is your score, Fernandino Teens? If you got them all correct, you are awesome. If not, that is the main reason why we will go on to our discussion for today. Let us stop and recall first what pronouns are. Pronoun is any of a small set of words in a language which substitutes for nouns or noun phrases and whose reference are named or understood in the context. Pronouns are used in place of nouns, naming words that are used as so that we do not repeat them too often. These are I, she, he, you, it, we, or they. As I mentioned earlier, there are several types of pronouns, but we are just going to focus on the most commonly used, which are the personal pronouns. Do you still remember what personal pronouns are? I would really appreciate if you type in the comment section below anything that you can remember about these personal pronouns. A personal pronoun is a pronoun that is associated primarily with a particular person in the grammatical sense. Personal pronouns may take on various forms depending on number, singular or plural for the most part. They may also take different forms depending on case, gender, or formality. It is important to note that personal pronouns may refer to objects, animals, or people. The following are the different personal pronouns. As you can see in the picture, personal pronouns have three cases. The subjective or nominative case, the objective case, and lastly, the possessive case. But before we continue with these three cases, what do we mean by the word case in pronouns? Let us go into details of the cases of pronouns after this short break. Please stay tuned and we will be right back. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ng ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. Earlier, we recalled the definition of pronoun and one of its kind, which is a personal pronoun. And as we go further, let us now talk about its case. 
case is the form that a noun or a pronoun takes to show its relationship to other words in a sentence. Case also refers to the use of a noun or pronoun in a sentence. There are three cases, subjective, objective, and possessive. The form of a noun is the same for both subjective case and the objective case, but they are different among pronouns. Let us discuss first the subjective case. The subjective case pronouns I, you, he, she, it, we, and they are used as subject of verbs and as predicate nominatives. Let us have the first one, which is the subject of a verb. The subject of a verb should be in the subjective case. Examples, I play jazz music while getting vaccinated. I is the subject of the verb play. Did he and she complete the homework? He and she are the subjects of did complete. They called while we were running. They is the subject of called, while we is the subject of were running. These personal pronouns are all used as the subjects of the verbs. Next, let us have the predicate nominative as a subjective case. A predicate nominative should be in the subjective case. It is a noun or pronoun that is in the predicate and that identifies or refers to the subject of the verb. A personal pronoun used as a predicate nominative comes after linking verbs, usually a form of the verb be. And these are am, um, is, was, were, be, or been. Let us have the following examples. The last one to leave was he. He comes after the linking verb was and identifies the subject one. The best performers are they. They comes after the linking verb are and identifies the subject performers. The winner from the Campus Journalism Virtual Contest is she. She comes after the linking verb is and identifies the subject winner. Did you see the subjective case of a personal pronoun used as a subject of a verb and a predicate nominative? Again, when a pronoun used in a sentence acts as the subject of a verb or as a predicate nominative, it should be in subjective case. Let us proceed to the second case of a personal pronoun. We call it the objective case. The objective case pronouns me, you, him, her, it, us and them, are used as direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of prepositions. Let us have first the direct object in objective case. A direct object should be in the objective case. It is a noun, pronoun, or word group that tells who or what receives the action of the verb or the receiver of the action. Examples? The vaccinator interviewed me before giving the vaccine. Me tells whom the vaccinator interviewed. Our science lesson took us to the other side of the planet. Us tells whom the science lesson took. Please don't leave him and his dog out in the rain. Him tells whom the speaker does not want to be left. Remember that direct object is a noun, 
pronoun or word group that tells who or what receives the action of the verb or simply the receiver of the action. If an objective case is in the form of direct object, it is also used for indirect objects. An indirect object often appears in sentences containing direct object. It tells to whom or what or for whom the action of the verb is done. It usually comes between an action verb and its direct object. Example, his mother built him a bookcase. Him tells for whom his mother built a bookcase. Bookcase is the direct object in the sentence and him comes between the verb and the direct object, bookcase. The science teacher gave us porters of the solar system. As tells for whom the porters are. Porters is the direct object in the sentence and as comes between the verb and the direct object. The owner sang as a song while having dinner. As tells for whom the song was. Song is the direct object in the sentence and as comes between the verb and the direct object bookcase. Again, indirect object tells to whom or what or for whom the action of the verb is done and is always accompanied by direct object. Lastly, object of a preposition is also used in the objective case. An object of a preposition should be in the objective case. A noun or a pronoun that follows a preposition is called the object of the preposition. Together, the preposition, its object, and any modifiers of that object make a prepositional phrase. Examples, near her, next to us, without me, and for him. When did you mail the package to them? Them is the object of the preposition to. Are you still planning to go to the movies with us? As is the object of the preposition with. Can you send this letter to her tomorrow? Her is the object of the preposition to. Again, when a pronoun used in a sentence acts as the direct object, indirect object, or object of a preposition, it should be in objective case. Are the first two cases of personal pronoun clear? Before we will proceed to the last one, let us check your understanding about the first two cases we discussed. In the activity that we will have, the personal pronoun use is identified already. You just have to type the comment section below its function or case, either subjective or objective. Item number one. In the story, the main character was she. What is your answer, Fernandino Teens? Please type on the comment section below. Yes, it is in subjective case because she in this sentence is the predicate nominative. Item number two, he was selected as the president of the class during face-to-face -face classes. You are correct if your answer is subjective because he in this sentence is the subject of the verb. Item number three, please give him the medications he needs. The answer is subjective. Because him in this sentence is the indirect 
object in the presence of the direct object medications. Item number four, the plot twist of the movie thrilled us. Of course, it's objective again because us in this sentence is the direct object. Let us have the last item for this activity. It was Tom and he who used the car. The answer is subjective because Tom and he in this sentence are the subjects of the verb. So there you go, Fernandino teens. I hope now you know the first two cases of personal pronouns and their use. We still have to discuss the third case when Fernandino Teens TV returns. Please stay tuned. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon ng bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo ang National Heritage Month, na ating temang Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng siyudad apin ning launching ning Bayong Heritage Passport. Ng Heritage Passport apin ning metong karang proyekto ning kaya katamong siyudad ning pamin na muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nuka rin makalagay lang ang ding eganagan ng heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo kaya katamong heritage district. Ah, kaya doon din kaya ni, ding importansya doon ding mapay na tradisyon, kaya ni siyudad, kalupa yun yung pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May ahos siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, anong nuka rin puntalan mula ding at syuking passport, at saka ka mag-selfie, kay ba't kanta palto may king tourism office, at mamiyalang sticker ka rin nga ganaga ng apuntalan mong lugar. At di mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balo ni Ngeni, panahon na ini, eh tamo makain bisa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa nga ini, agkatan ko lang ding bikers tamo, edad 18 hanggang 50, imbis na lumaot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamong heritage structures, kaya ni Siudad. Anya naman ka rin mumunang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamong heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Gawan nyo mo ba ang tamakapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabila ng kaya kayong heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyakin, na nano ko pa, tara na! Since TV. Sa TV Season 2 Previously, in our discussion, we were able to define what pronouns are and the first two cases of personal pronouns which are subjective and objective. But wait, there's more! We still have the third case which we always use in our daily conversations. What do you think we call the third case of personal pronouns which are used to show ownership or possession? Please do type your answer on the comment section below. You got it right! The third case of personal pronouns is called possessive case of pronouns. The possessive pronouns mine, yours, his, hers, its, ours, and theirs are used as parts of sentence in the same ways in which pronouns in the subjective and the objective cases are used. The possessive case of a personal pronoun can be in a form of or used as a subject, predicate nominative, and direct object. 
let us start with the subject in possessive case. As mentioned earlier with the first case, a subject is the person or thing performing the action in a sentence. Let us see the following examples. Paul already got his vaccination certificate. Mine is not here yet. Mine is the subject of the latter sentence and it indicates ownership. That is why it is in possessive case. My friend's booster shot is Pfizer. Mine is Moderna. Mine is the subject of the latter sentence and it indicates ownership. That is why again it is in possessive case. Now let us have the predicate nominative used still in possessive case. A predicate nominative is a noun or pronoun that it is in the predicate and identifies or refers to the subject of the verb. Take note that it usually comes after linking verbs. Examples are, that certificate is his. His functions as predicate nominative as it is in predicate and it identifies or refers to the subject and indicates possession. At last, I found you. This vaccination card is yours. Yours functions as predicate nominative and it indicates ownership. That is why again it is in possessive case. Lastly, we have direct objects in possessive case. A direct object is a noun, pronoun, or word group that tells who or what receives the action of the verb. Let us consider these examples. My two sisters got theirs yesterday. There's in that sentence functions as direct object because it tells who received the action and it indicates possession. I put on my shoes and Chloe put on hers. Hers functions as direct object and again it indicates possession. Remember, do not misuse a personal pronoun with a personal determiner. Use possessive determiners before a noun and possessive pronouns in place of a noun. Remember always that a pronoun substitutes a noun. Let me show you the difference between possessive determiners and possessive pronouns. Let us start with the determiner. In singular form, we have the singular first person my, second person your, third person his, her, and its. For the plural form, we have the plural first person are, second person your, and third person their. And for possessive pronouns, in singular form, we have first person mine, second person yours, third person his, her, and its. For the plural form, we have first person ours, second person yours, and lastly, third person theirs. To understand further, let us check the following examples. My name is Peter and I'm looking for my eyeglass. My dad says there is one in the wardrobe, but it is his, not mine. My mom also got an eyeglass. Look, the dog is wearing hers. We use possessive determiners with nouns to indicate possession. My name is Peter and I am looking for my eyeglass. My is placed before a noun name. 
while my again is placed before a noun eyeglass. Possessive determiners come before a noun. Therefore, my here are both possessive determiners and not a pronoun. Let us look at these next statements. My dad says there is one in the wardrobe, but it is his, not mine. His and mine replace previously mentioned nouns. My mom also got an eyeglass. Look, the dog is wearing hers. The same with hers which substituted the noun mom's. Therefore, his, mine, and hers in item 2 and 3 are all possessive pronouns. They are used alone without being followed by a noun. Possessive pronouns replace previously mentioned nouns. Now, are you ready for some exercises? Let us start. Determine the correct pronoun in each sentence below to complete the sentences. Number one. Mr. Lee showed Max and her, she, or he, how to do the lab experiment. What is your answer, Fernandino Teens? Please type in the comment section below. You got it right! Her is the correct answer. Mr. Lee showed Max and her how to do the lab experiment. Number two, either Martin or she, her, or them will represent the whole class in the meeting on the upcoming Foundation Day. What is your answer, Fernandino Teens? The correct pronoun is she, for it is used as the subject. Number three. After we became peer counselors, anyone dealing with the problem came to we, us, or them. Great job! Us is the correct answer. After we became peer counselors, anyone dealing with the problem came to us. Number four. The best woman for the job is she, her, or herself. What is your answer, Fernandino Teens? The best woman for the job is she. Number five. The team complained that the opponents did not shake hands with they or them. If your answer is them, you are right. Thank you for the active participation, Fernandino Teens. More fun and exciting activities when we return. Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving, or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang mahalawakang pagtulong, pagantabay, at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, 
at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Ano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay iaad ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring ipost ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade, at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng ipost. Pwede ring mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Tandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gayat ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child, kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, Kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. At this point, let me invite you join as I go through the following basic rules in using personal pronouns. A pronoun takes the place of a specific noun. Examples of pronouns include I, you, he, she, it, we, 
they, me, him, her, us, them, hers, his, who, whom, whose, and which. The original noun which the pronoun replaces is called the antecedent. Pronouns help with the flow of one's writing by pointing to something or someone, the original noun or antecedent already mentioned or named. Pronouns make writing concise by eliminating the need to repeat the antecedent. Like nouns, pronouns function as subjects or objects in sentences. Pronouns change form according to whether they are feminine or masculine, whether they are singular or plural, how they function in the sentence or its cases. And again, these are subjective, objective, or possessive. For your last activity, you will be reading a passage entitled, Nature in Us. Identify the personal pronouns used in the underlined sentence and its case. Nature is everything around us. It provides the beauty of our environment. Without the amazing gifts of nature, the human life would be dull and meaningless. Nature is one of the best, precious and noblest gift of God on this planet. It has so many things which have been given to us for our benefits. It has bestowed us with water, air, plants, and much more to make us survive on this planet. Apart from these, there are so many scenic and beautiful things in nature to see such as hills, mountains, valleys, greeneries, rivers, and many more. All these beautiful creations are given by God for human beings to enjoy and utilize them. Therefore, it is our duty to respect and conserve natural things for the betterment of future generations. Parents should encourage children to see and enjoy the beauty of nature and should teach them ways of preserving nature by proper maintenance and cleanliness. In this way, animals and other living organisms will benefit as well. Nature is not ours alone, it is also theirs. Let me repeat the instruction for this activity. Identify the personal pronouns in each underlined sentence. Let us check if you got them all correctly. We have six underlined sentences, so let us have the first one. Nature is everything around us. The personal pronoun use is us, and it is in objective case. It provides the beauty of our environment. Of course, we have the pronoun it, and it is in subjective case. It has so many things which have been given to us for our benefits. We have two personal pronouns in this sentence. First is it in subjective case. Then we have us in objective case. It has bestowed us with water, air, plants, and much more to make us survive on this planet. Alright, the answer is it again, and it is in subjective case. And then we have us in objective case. Parents should encourage children to see and enjoy the beauty of nature and should teach them ways of preserving nature by proper maintenance and cleanliness. The personal pronoun use is them. 
and it is in objective case. Nature is not ours alone, it is also theirs. We have two answers, ours and theirs, both in possessive case. So there you go, Fernandino teens. I hope you enjoyed our episode for today. To sum it up, a pronoun is one of the parts of speech which is used to replace a noun in a sentence. The noun that is replaced by a pronoun is called an antecedent. So if nouns clearly represent the people, places, things, and ideas that they are used for, why would we want to replace them with pronouns? Read aloud this sentence and you will begin to see why we use pronouns. Donna and her sister are traveling to Donna and her sister's uncle's house for vacation. And Donna and her sister's uncle are going to cook Donna's, her sister's, and her uncle's favorite dinner. Consider the same sentence when pronouns are used to replace the nouns now that they have been introduced to you. Donna and her sister are traveling to their uncle's house for vacation, and he is going to cook their favorite dinner. This is much easier to read and comprehend, right? So pronouns are useful because they help make statements smoother and clearer. They are also useful for expressing ideas about ourselves without having to use our own names. As mentioned earlier, by using a person's pronouns correctly, we also simply show them respect and therefore form an inclusive environment. These are just some of the reasons why you should know the correct pronoun to be used in addressing someone along with avoiding misunderstanding and miscommunication. Pronouns are important part of speech because we use them frequently. And we should use pronouns because they serve important purposes. However, we need to make sure when we use them we are using them correctly and effectively because incorrect pronoun usage is a common source of ambiguity and confusion in both writing and speaking. For take-home activity, you are to construct an updated news report in your place that's either in your city or province about the current situation in COVID-19 pandemic using personal pronouns of different cases or using personal pronouns of different cases construct a paragraph with 10 sentences about your personal experiences in your household dealing with this current pandemic you just have to choose one from these two activities and submit it to your english teacher Good luck and thank you for your active participation, Fernandino Teens. Again, I am Mom Cristel Pangilinan. See you again next time only here in Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. Bye! Sampai